Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to all of you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Yusuf, for all your work in organizing this, putting it together, um, making contact with all our uh, esteemed guests. And um, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all the good work that you do. Um, honorable guests, esteemed uh, dignitaries, it is indeed um, an honor and a pleasure to be able to join you on this um, on this occasion. It, the occasion itself is is one of extreme grief and sorrow and heartbreak. Um, I am speaking to you right now from Melbourne, Australia, and in my immediate radius are uh, relatives and family members of those who lost their lives. Uh, in the New Zealand massacre. And um, in fact, um, I have students here uh, at, the, uh, at the institution that I'm teaching who, who lost uncles or aunts. And um, we got to see the trauma uh, that these families went through firsthand. And then that fateful trip to go and see their relatives uh, after this incident. Suffice to say, it was a, uh, it was a devastation at many levels, and it made us all question, um, you know, question many, many different things that, you know, what is really happening in the world? What direction is the world headed in? And um, what types of people will, um, will we entrust this world to after we leave? What will the next generations be like? What will their priorities be like? And um, what things do we need to think about uh, as preventative measures to make sure that the world does not spin out of control? There is already so much damage and hurt taking place every day all around the world. So the, the incident sparked um, for myself and, and, and many uh, community leaders, and I'm sure yourselves as well, many existential questions, the big questions, that really what, what direction are we going in and how can we, um, how can we uh, somehow manage to, to control this before it, it truly um, is, um, it self-destructs. Racism um, is, it's not just um, it's not just an attitude. It's a it's not just a social evil. It is a distorted perception. It is um, a certain lens through which a person perceives the world around them. It is a lens that on one side um, on the one side of the lens is a sense of superiority, and whatever is on the other side of the lens is perceived as inferior if it doesn't match certain criteria. And with this, uh, with this mindset, the person goes through the world um, perceiving things to be uh, in a certain way and judging things or valuing things or evaluating things with this sort of distorted and skewed um, lens that they, that they have on. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting and it's also disturbing. Um, right now in, in the context of what just I've been hearing for the last couple of weeks. Um, Brother Yusuf mentioned that I, I started out in Edmonton. Edmonton is my hometown. That's where I grew up. And um, I lived through um, some, uh, some, I guess you can say, uh, exposure or maybe a great deal of exposure to what racism looks like, what it's like to be on the receiving end of, of racism. And um, it seemed like um, it seemed like people have this pent up hatred inside them, and they channel it towards those that um, that they don't like uh, by virtue of their skin color or ethnicity or language. And I can say it's been more than uh, you know more than once, many many times, um, we were picked on by people in their in our neighborhood going to the mosque. Um, you know that the lightest sort of thing was to be mocked and made fun of when you're going to prayer 
because maybe the way you're dressed or the fact that you're going to the mosque itself. And then sometimes this would be followed up by the mosque itself being vandalized. Um, people hurling curses and racial slurs your way, uh, wherever you are. It could be at school, it could be um, in the playground, it could be in the shopping center. You, you get the sense that you're not safe anywhere. And then there were those incidents where, um, you know, people physically attack you, they gang up on you, and they beat the living heck out of you just because they don't like your color. And ask someone who's been through that what their view on the world is. And as a youngster um, uh, growing up with repeated exposure to such attacks, to such physical violence and abuse, and then as a young teenager, um, many times I felt that this, these experiences can potentially lead me to a very dark place, a place where I hate the world. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like the people around me. I don't like the country that I live in. I, I'm not happy with anything because everyone seems to be against me. The system seems to be designed to sort of weed out people of different uh, ethnicities and then attack them. And there was no one to stop them. I remember on one occasion, if it hadn't been for my science teacher who just who happened to be late at school after track practice a few boys ganged up on me and they just jumped on and they beat i did not know them they were much older than me but they just kept on beating and beating and beating on me and the science teacher just happened to come out through that exit of the school and and and, and managed to save me otherwise i don't know could have ended up in the hospital so how many how many incidents will it take? How many people will it take going through these, uh, these types of experiences before we really start taking a hold uh, and a grip on, uh, on the situation? You know, imagine my pain when I hear that in the last couple of months, you know, so many attacks have been made on Muslim women wearing hijab right there in Edmonton. And I'm thinking, what has changed after all this time? We went through this as children and now um, so many years later, decades later, people are still going through it. It's not, not only is it unfair, I think we should have evolved to the point where we all agree that this is unacceptable and there have to be certain measures that we take collectively. This is not something that, um, you know, it's definitely not a political issue. We don't want to politicize it. This is uh, one of those issues where everyone needs to get involved because the problem is real. You know, we talk about, um, you know, coming from a person, coming from, uh, you know, the background of someone who has challenged radicalization, combated radicalization of Muslim youth, gone out there and challenged the extremist narrative and done everything in, within our power and resources to deconstruct this narrative of Islam as, you know, as a, as a violent religion or as, as a religion that is not at peace or can't be at peace uh, with anyone, as someone who's gone out and done that, and then dealing with youth who have been, you know, the recipients of abuse similar to what I've gone through, it's very difficult to give them a reason to stop hating the world. We're talking about people, we're talking about young, sensitive, delicate minds. And again, who are we leaving, who are we entrusting the world to? Whether, it doesn't really matter whether it's, it's white supremacist or it's some other entity. The point is that racism is, is cancerous. It decays the inner workings and the inner networks, the beautiful relationships and ties that a society needs to have within itself in order to thrive and prosper. Racism eats away at all of those things. That's why from the Islamic perspective, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, treated racism as a thing of the period of ignorance. Called it things from the period. He saw one man insulting another person by, um, by referencing their mother's race, that she was dark skinned. The prophet happened to pass by and hear this. And he said, wait a minute, did you just try to shame that man? He said, yes. And did you try to shame him through his mother, through the color of her skin? And so, you know, he was, he was obviously embarrassed and, and all of that. And the prophet said, you still have some remnants of ignorance in you, of the period of ignorance. Even though you've come into Islam and you're now supposed to be enlightened, you've still got traces of that in you. He called it ignorance. 
when a group of people uh, had, a, had a conflict and had a fight and each one called out their tribe, the Prophet said, what, what is this? You're trying to pit tribe against tribe. What, your tribe is more superior than theirs and theirs is more superior than yours? It doesn't work like that. And in one of his final addresses in his farewell, farewell pilgrimage, he said, look, there is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab, a non-Arab over an Arab, any color of skin over any other color of skin. And he demanded that all of these things be put to an end. So from our perspective, it's very clear uh, what needs to be done. Uh, and um, the how is something that we need to work on together because this is not something that one ethnic group can do all by themselves. Not even a couple of uh, ethnic groups together can do this. We need the support of the broader communities. This comes back when you hurt someone then don't be shocked or surprised if they try to hurt you back. This is what we're seeing. We saw this in America uh, at a very, very large scale. People felt the pain. They said, we're not going to take it anymore. And now we're going to retaliate. The problem is when you put retaliation into the hands of the public, then you have complete anarchy and chaos. That is not sustainable. It needs to be addressed at a much deeper level, at a grassroots level. So, um, I'm happy that all of you are here. I hope you will um, really think about the how, how we're going to do this. Islam unraveled from our side. We are completely committed to this, to eradicating uh, racism, not just in the form of Islamophobia and against Muslims, but any race against any race. We would like to see an end to that. We see that as harmful to our society and, um, and our future and our generations. Thank you so much uh, again for participating. Our hearts and prayers are with the victims of this tragedy. And uh, we hope that they have found the strength to move on and uh, somehow calm some of that pain in their hearts. And we look forward to reaching out and doing everything that we can do to support them, to comfort them and be of any, uh, to, and be of any service to any of them. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.